All right, so um, I've been like really praying over what I was gonna talk about, and uh, I'm studying a lot in like psychology and things like that. And uh, this specific thing really stuck out to me about um, perception and perspective. And um, I felt like it was really for a good time right now to be able to talk about. So we're gonna focus on perspective today. So the framework in which we view ourselves, others in this world, it's all determined by the lenses that we put on. So um, according to the Webster's Dictionary, the word perception is described as the awareness of one's environment through physical sensation. So in other words, it's a view that's based upon what our senses are able to do. So what we can hear, what we can see, what we can touch, smell, taste. Um, and perspective in the same dictionary is described as the aspect in which a subject or its parts are mentally viewed or it's a view of things in their true relationship or their relative importance. So it's also, uh, perspective is also influenced by our beliefs and our experiences, our past experiences. So um, these are really important. So we have two sets of views that we can see the world. We have a worldly view and we have a godly view. Those are our options. So we need to take caution in the lens that we see through because it can affect our view in either a positive or in a negative manner. Um, so I decided to use my glasses uh, for an illustration. I thought this was really cool. So I want you guys to think of putting on a pair of glasses for those of us who have glasses um, or those of you who don't. I want you to think of a pair of glasses. So these are a set of lenses and they're intended to give us a very clear view of what how we're supposed to see life. It gives us the ability to see color more clear. It gives us a more clear picture when without glasses, things can be distorted. They can be looked at as different or skewed. Um, so if your vision's bad, things will be blurry, they'll be out of place, they'll be discolored, and they're not gonna be as they should be. They're not gonna be their true form. Um, but when we put on our glasses, this is where caution takes place again. Because what if you put on somebody else's glasses, right? You're not going to be able to see clearly because you're looking through somebody else's lenses. You're looking through somebody else's perspective. And that's not the perspective. That's not the view that we're called to have. It gives us still the distorted view. Then things still don't make sense. However, if we put on glasses that are for our prescription or that are clearer and they're true, it gives us a clear view of clarity and it clears out all debris of confusion, right? So the same is for our perspective. We have the option to view things as the world sees it, which is based on what the world says is true and what the world standard sets for us. Or we have the option for godly perspective, which is what the standards that God sets for truth. So I think about how the world tells us that people should look a certain way, they should weigh a certain um, amount, um, you know, it's popular to be so tall. You should have a high IQ. You should dress this certain style. The world sets standards for us, and that's how the world tells us we should view things. Um, but God sets standards for us as well in the Word of God, and He tells us how to view things. He gives us the fruits of the Spirit. That's how we're to treat others. That's how we're to see others. As Josh talks a lot about having value, putting a tin on people's foreheads, um, and having that proper view of ourselves, of others, and the world around us. So I want to talk about what things shape our perspective. So the things that shape our perspective can be from music that we listen to, it could be from movies that we watch often, and it can even be things from social media that even shape our perspective. Um, and as mentioned before, it can be from our past experiences, it could be from things that have been trauma, it could even be positive things too. It's not just negative. Um, as well as our personal beliefs. So when I was studying this, I was thinking, well, how exactly do these things affect me? Because when I think of music and stuff, I hear a lot of people say, well, it doesn't really affect me. It's just something to watch or it's just something to listen to. It's just entertainment. But the thing is, is that these things really do twist our view very often. So with music, music can affect our moods. You know, if you listen to a sad song, what do you become? Sad. You become sad, right? If you listen to a happy, upbeat song, what do you become? Happy. Happy. So the lyrics also have a powerful influence with our perspective as well. So I want you to think about a song that you guys like. 
You absolutely love it. And you could even sing it and play it in your head or hum to it. Those songs, we remember those things because the lyrics touched us. The lyrics, the words mean something to us. It's a, it's a relation that we have with it, whether it's through emotion or if it's through a past experience. Um, but these, shi these shifts, um, it shifts our perspective to view life through a lens of the lyrics, whether again, positive or negative. So if you're listening to country music, not dissing it, but when you listen to country music and it's talking about drinking, partying, and girls cheating, and let's go sit on the tailgate and waste life, you know, like those things we can, some of us can relate to those things and it can bring us down. It can put us into a spiral um, and it can very much shift our perspective of people or things uh, or places even. With movies, it can influence our behavior as well as our thoughts. Uh, there was a study that was conducted that I watched uh, through one of my studies and it shows about, um, it had different age groups from about seven years old and it had up to a 60 year old man different age groups and they were all watching the exact same movie and it was about aggression and um, it was about a doll that they put in a room and this woman was beating on it putting it down holding it down um, just doing a lot of aggressive things to it while these people were watching it they did an experiment where they could see that the emotion was rising up within them and they became and started to act aggressively as well that's the power that even movies have in our lives yeah. Or the things that we watch, even in our perspective of maybe our childhood life, the way that we grew up. Maybe your mm -hmm. uh, home life was abusive, or maybe you went through things like that. Um, it can still, again, distort it. Even with social media, social media is mostly full of crap, full of garbage. It has its positive features to it, but oftentimes it gives a distorted view that we tend to trust the internet. And we become chameleons where we want to try to blend in with our friends behind the screen, where we might join in with, there's, you know, there's talk of bullying, there's negative talk, there's put downs, there's all of this stuff about politics. And if I don't agree with you, I'm going to unfriend you and never talk to you again, or I don't like you because of your beliefs. And that's not the way that God has intended for our perspective. Our perspective that God gives us is to love others to treat them as Christ loves the church, you know, and to unfriend somebody isn't loving as Christ does. Experiences as well, past experiences, they influence our perspective by shaping our biases and our opinions, as well as our expectations that are for ourselves and others that are around us. And we tend to allow our experiences to be the lens in which we view people, places, and things. Um, I'll even um, give you all some examples like, I was thinking of these and they were kind of hard to, to be able to talk about honestly, but um, I've had different experiences in each and every one of these categories, to be honest. And um, with even the church, the perspective of the church, you know, I, I went to church most of my childhood. I was in and out of different um, denominations and things. And I was done very wrong by some church members. And it was because I made a choice to buy drugs off of people who I thought were mm -hmm. Christians. And I was done wrong, I was robbed, um, I was just done very dirty. That gave me, I, I put on the lenses. That influenced me, but I chose to have the wrong perspective. And I started to view the church as, they're gonna do me dirty, they're gonna do me wrong, they're gonna treat me a certain way, they're gonna diss me if I dress a certain way. and. Um, I began to have a very distorted view of the church. Um, even with my perspective of God, I grew up in a home that uh, there was no dad. You know, dad showed up maybe five times in my life and it was a high bye to my mom. Um, I wasn't really talked to. Uh, that gave me a really distorted view as well as the abuse that I had went through. I had a very screwed up view of men. And even with that, I had a very skewed up view of God because when people said God the Father, my my vision, my view of Father was very messed up, very hurtful. I didn't see God as the faithful one that was talked about or preached about. Uh, but I had to learn how to switch my perspective. I had to learn and grow and read about God, study who my God is. 
And when I learn that he is loving, when I learn that there are promises that I can stand on, that he loves me, he'll never forsake me. Those are the opposite things that I grew up thinking, you know, and I had to learn and I also had to believe in truth. I had to get from this to this. And that's what made the biggest difference for me. Um, what I mentioned about music, you know, I, wa I would listen to country music all the time and I like I like rap music, um, you know, about the whole smoke pot, drink all day kind of stuff. And that stuff, that garbage, it taught me the wrong lifestyle because I thought, well, I can relate to this. I have, <coughs> I have sorrows, I have hurts, and I don't know how to deal with it, but this stuff's talking about just drink it away or, you know, go party or something. And that's what I began to do. And my perspective was skewed again. Uh, I even think about something silly like watching crime shows, you know, NCIS and stuff like that. Um, you know, you ever get those thoughts sometimes where it's like, man, I could totally get away with that, you know, or man, I bet I could rob a bank, mm -hmm. things like that. That's it. it. Again, it just is distorts our view and it can revert us back to old behaviors as well. Um, so you ever hear the, the saying that says garbage in, garbage out? It's absolutely 100% true because the stuff that we put in us, positive or negative, that's what's going to come out. You know, um, I know I was thinking when I was saying this about uh, how you taught about thoughts become words, words become actions, actions become lifestyles. You know, it, it does. It starts in the mind and what we put in, it can affect our thoughts. We have to be very careful with those things. Um, but this is our goal as as us being Christians. This is our ultimate goal is to have a godly perspective. So what is a godly perspective, right? So God calls us to have this kind of perspective. It's a divine perspective <coughs> that means seeing things the way that God sees them. So when we have a heavenly perspective, we see the world through his eyes and we make decisions that are according to his will for our lives. So we are on this earth, but we're not of this earth. And in this world, but not of this world, we are called to live above reproach. That means we're not to be a part of this world. We're in it, but we're not to live like it. Um, so we live in a world and we operate in it, but we're not made just for this world. We're citizens of heaven. We're his heirs. We're his royal priesthoods. And eternally, et 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 eternal life waits us, awaits, awaits us. There we go. So when we start understanding and receiving our identity the way that Christ has for us, it's so much easier to have the right outlook on life. Yeah. So again, we have to learn about the God that we serve. We need to learn about his characteristics. What is God? Guys, throw some stuff out that you think God is. Love. Loving. Loving. Kind. That's right. Kind. Gentle. Mm -hmm. Gracious. Amen. Merciful. Amen. Yeah, and he's all those things. He, he's faithful. He's just. He's forgiving. He's kind. He also disciplines those that he loves. You know, he's, he's got so many different promises for us. And when we learn who our God is, we learn about who we are as well. Just like we just read about, like, we're his heirs. Like, we're inheriting the kingdom of God. Like, I don't know how much, like, that makes me excited, quite frankly. Like, I'm excited for eternity with my God, with my dad that's in heaven. And when I learn about who my God is and I learn about who I am through him and because of him, I'm made righteous, I'm made pure, I'm made clean. And that's what my perspective is. When I shift my perspective from worldly to godly, my perspective is pure, my perspective is clean. Now I can choose to put back on those lenses of the past. I can choose to put back on those lenses of old behaviors and old habits that I used to have. But when I choose to have a godly perspective, I have the correct outlook on life that God intended for me to be able to have. So to develop a godly life, uh, godly perspective, we got to first know his truth. And we need to believe that he, that we are created in the image of God. That means he instilled in us the things that he has for us. I think about um, in Genesis, in the very beginning, when he created mankind, when he created all of the earth, what did he say after everything he created? It is what? Good. It is good. That was his intentions. That is his intentions. It is good good it's not bad it's not screwed up god intended it for good satan when satan came and things started getting skewed and the fall of man happened 
things came, became sinful and we live in a sinful nature, but again, we have a choice. What perspective are you guys going to put on today? What lens, what framework are you choosing to look at this world through? Uh, so we must replace the garbage that we've allowed in our lives with the things of God. So I think of even with um, the scripture that says to take our thoughts captive. It's, it's good. Like we're to take those thoughts captive. That means grab a hold of it, right? And give it to God. We have to release that. We have to replace that with something that's truth. We have to counter that with something that's truth. So, um, for example, like we need to surround ourselves with like-minded people that are in our lives. Surround ourselves with the right people, equally yoked people. People who are running the same race towards the same prize that we're running towards. We, we need to listen to godly music that edifies, it lifts our spirits, it lifts our minds, it lifts our heads, and it brings glory to God. Um, I believe for every one of you, as well as myself, that we wanna, we wanna be able to please God with our lives in everything that we do, every aspect of our lives. I wanna do everything to bring glory to God. And um, we, need, we need to watch movies that portray truth, that portray healthy behavior, that portray the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, all of these. Um, so, Um, when we know whose we are, we know who we are. And when we know truth, we can properly view ourselves, others, and this world through, godly, uh, through a godly perspective, which means through a lens of love. So for my life, I've had to end up making a personal prayer because as I was kind of studying this for this and as I was working through my stuff with school and I was writing some papers, there was a lot of things that God was showing me in my life that I really needed to change. And one of them is my perspective. It's, uh, it was very easy for me to be able to revert to negative thinking, to revert to negative old habits in my life. Um, but I ended up having to write down a prayer and I learned and practiced it for a while. And this be, it ended up becoming a personal prayer for me. And, um, I just wanted to share it with y'all, but I, I pray that God removes the blinders from my eyes. I pray that he helps me to see through spiritual eyes and not my fleshly eyes. You know, uh, I used to hear pastors a lot of times back home when they would always pray and they'd say, God, open my spiritual eyes and ears. And I'm like, what is that? I have physical eyes and ears. What's, I can't see spiritual. But it's about that perspective as well. I don't want to see through these eyes because these eyes, I can't. Even physically, I can't see much. But when I put these on as godly perspective, I can see everything clearly. It has a brand new meaning to it. It has a pure meaning to it. And I'm able to see things correctly. So I ask him for a brand new perspective. I ask him to, un I ask him to unmask what the enemy has covered so that I can see others with value and with love. Like I shared before, my, my perspective was very skewed of people um, I didn't know I didn't know how to see people with love. Uh, I always thought people were out to hurt me or harm me. Um, but I learned again who God is. I learned who I am and how I'm called to walk, how I'm called to see other people. And that again, it's all rooted in love. And I also ask him to teach me how to live above reproach. Because it's very easy, like we said about chameleons, it's very easy to blend in with the crowd that we that we put ourselves in very easy it's hard to stand out it's uncomfortable god doesn't call us to be comfortable he calls us to do things that are above what this world has to offer and we're not of this world but in this world i want to learn how to speak truth and how to share it with others so that way we can learn to see through the same thing you know the bible also tells us we're to have one mind one mind one accord we, it's hard to be like-minded and it's hard to be of one mind when we all have a different view, you know, meaning that if we're not looking at things in the right perspective of truth and seeing it how God laid it out for us, it's going to be hard for us to be of one mind and one heart. So this is where I have a lot of scriptures. Um, so this portion is scriptures that will help us to improve our perspective of life. 
So 2 Corinthians 4.18, these are all from the New International Version. Um, so 2 Corinthians 4.18, it says, So we fix our eyes not on what, I, what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, what is unseen is eternal. So where we focus our gaze determines the kind of perspective that we're going to have. So if we keep our eyes on God, our Heavenly Father feeds His children with wisdom and with strength. God reminds us to look up and ask for His divine perspective. For we have been given the mind of Christ, and His blessings are always ready for us and waiting to be released. It's up to us if we're going to grab a hold of that. That's good. The next one's Isaiah 55, 8. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. Neither are your ways my ways, sorry, declares the Lord. So what we see in this world is the here and the now, right? Sometimes it's unsure. It's hazy and it's confusing. But God sees from the beginning until the end and the complete total picture. We can trust his righteousness and his will for our lives. God sees the whole big picture. He wrote the story from Genesis to Revelation. He knows everything from beginning to end. That's what he is. He is beginning to end. Um, we only see parts of it. So when things in your life seem out of control, I want you to remember this. He's not done writing your story. He's not done yet. We do not trust uh, we, do, we do not just trust Christ but, uh, but his love for us too. And his love will bring us peace in and out of every single season. Uh, one thing I like to tell people when I meet with them and mentoring and stuff is um, I think about, because we talk about it quite often, um, about storms. You know, we're going into one, we're in one, or we're coming out of one. And one of the biggest things I've learned for myself that I've discovered, and it really truly helped me, and it still helps me to this day to be able to get through things is whether I'm in one, when I'm going into a storm, I remember that God promised me overwhelming victory. I have victory to overcome this storm. Amen. When I'm in the middle of a storm, I remember I still have victory. My God is standing on top of the storm. He's riding on it. He's in it with me. He promised he'll go through the fire for me. He went to hell for me, for you, Matt, for you, Britt, all of us, all of us. And even in the end, when we come out of the storm, I can have total victory because my God has victory. Yeah. And we're righteous. And I thank God that I have that promise I can stand on. And when you hold on to that and when you remember that you have victory through everything, through every obstacle, even the scripture that says, count it all joy when you face various trials, like count it all joy because we have victory. It's a promise. It's not something that's, well, if you make it through, awesome, let's, let's shout for victory. But if you don't, eh, you did something wrong. It's not it. God says, I've given you overwhelming victory. Shout, praise him for it. That's a given promise. And so scriptures, these are scriptures for uh, when we need a new perspective. So Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death blessings and curses now choose life so that you and your children may live so you can change your thought patterns and you can receive a new perspective how you might be asking it's by simply making the choice so every time that we think uh, the physical makeup of our brain it changes because we can actively direct our thinking and we can switch our unhealthy thought patterns and we can replace them with positive ones 2 Corinthians 5.17. Anybody know that one? For in Christ you are a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. Amen. Brand new. So when you say yes to Christ, you are an absolute new creation. That means you're a brand new person. You're made pure. Yeah. You are no longer bound to your old ways or your old perspective. This is talking, this is relating to the past experiences of your life. You're not that same person that you were. 10 years ago, five years ago, a year ago, yesterday. You're not that same person anymore. You are brand spanking new. So you're no longer bound to your old ways or your old perspective. God made you very unique. He made you a one of a kind. Josh always says you're a prototype. You know, you're special. 
giving you a fresh mind to receive fresh air from him. So you have to decide not to let the lies of the past to still keep a hold of you today. Don't let it keep you captive. Don't let it hold you down. Don't let it oppress you. So God invites you to sit on his truth and to receive his promises today. We had that choice today to receive those things. So this is the scriptures about <clears throat> how to see others from a new perspective as well. <clears throat> so 1 Corinthians 12, 21, it says, the eye, cannot say, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. So in this scripture, all these things that we do in this world are to help build lives founded in Christ and homes that have a firm foundation so that no thief can break in. We all need one another. We all need each other. That's what the body of Christ is for. We're to hold each other up. We're to lock arms with each other and hold each other up. So we all need each other. And the Lord has appointed each one to serve a specific purpose so we can give more value to each other. Surely I need you. God put things in you that I need in my life. God put things in you that people in this room or people out in this world are going to need that I don't have to offer. Or I may not be there in that moment and God instilled it in you to give to that person. Same with you, Brandy. God put things in you that I can't do. But he's put special things in you that nobody else in this room has. Because it's a gift for you to be able to give to the world. I need each and every one of you. You guys need me. The church needs each other. And what the scripture is saying about that, I can't say to the hand, I don't need you. It's because as a body, we need every part of our body to work properly. Mm -hmm. And when one part is falling, we need to go to that and we need to help them. We need to brush them off, speak truth into them, speak life, help them to get on their feet, lock arms, and keep moving forward towards that prize. That's what the body of Christ is to do. And then lastly is the... Um, the scriptures on eternal perspective. So Galatians 1.10, it says, Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? I'm not going to lie to y'all. When I read this first part, I had to swallow some pride. Because I, I tend to be a, a people pleaser. And I forget the one that I'm supposed to be pleasing overall. So am I now, am, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. Mm. Ouch. Right? Ouch. I had to swallow that. So we must ask ourselves, am I attempting to seek God? Am I attempting to seek God's approval or that of other people around me? Or am I attempting to gain approval from other people? Is our hope in God's kingdom or is our hope in this earth? Where is your hope placed today? So the truth is that we sometimes forget that this is not our home. This is not our home. We should not let shame <coughs> hinder us from going back to God. And we are called to be his beloved. We are blessed and our hope needs to be fixed on him. Our hope is found in him. So in closing, I want to ask you a few questions. I want you guys to self-examine right now. What lens are you viewing yourself through? What lens are you viewing others in this life through? What is influencing your perspective right now? Is it the hurts? Is it past experiences? Is it worldly truths that have skewed your vision? So I want you to ask the Lord this morning to remove these things that have blocked your clear view that he has for you. God created each of us to have value and to have love and to have the, we have the ability. We've been given the ability to know truth. So let's ask him today to help us to shift our perspectives from a worldly perspective to a godly perspective. So let's go into prayer. Father God, I just thank you so much.